Okay, so it's time to write our first assembly programming language program. I'd say that ten times. Um, I'm going to do several things that I'm not going to explain, but if you are following along, you need to mimic perfectly. I will explain why we're doing the things that we're doing as future videos come, but unfortunately I have to kind of throw a bunch of stuff up on the screen and I don't want to bombard you with a whole ton of information at once. I'm very I, I personally am a very experiential learner, meaning that's fine, get it up there, but let me toy with it and play with it and put my hands on the keyboard and change things and things like that. That's how I learn. I think that's how many people learn. Uh, if you're that type of learner, the video playlist will work good for you. Let me right-click here. Click Add New Item. Uh, oh, sorry, I was off the screen. Uh, I need to choose, let's see, I'm looking for header file right here. And uh, the reason I'm choosing a header file is I'm not actually going to make a header file. I'm just tricking Visual Studio into making, allowing me to make a text file in my project. I'm going to call it uh, myassembly.asm, short for assembly, but it can be dot whatever you want it to be. There's no real restriction as to what the extension is. I'm just going to say ASM. Click Add, and that should give me a blank assembly file. Now. In my C++ playlist, you will find videos on compilation units, and I go into great depth as to compilation units and linking and all that sort of thing. I'm going to do a brief overview, just kind of tell you how I'm going to trick Visual Studio into allowing us to write assembly code and debug it and analyze what's going on on the processor and that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so this is a C++ file we call Mainer. So this is the Mainer C++. I'll say m.cpp because I don't want to write mainer. I'm going to just write m.cpp. Then we have this other file, this .asm file, uh, which I will call uh, myassembly.asm. And that's the file. And so we're going to write a little bit of code in here, but essentially this code is going to tell the assembly code to do its job. We're going to write a bulk of our uh, examples and instructions in this assembly file over here. Uh, when we tell Visual Studio to compile, though, what it will do is invoke the C++ compiler on this file, the CPP file, which is short for C++, go figure, and that will output a file with the extension OBJ, or an object file. And then what we need to do is we also need to tell Visual Studio to invoke the Microsoft Assembler on this assembly file, and it too will output an OBJ file. And then what we need to do, um, or Visual Studio will do it for us actually, it's kind of cool, it figures this out. But Visual Studio sees that what we told it to do with this outputs an OBJ file, and so it will combine both of these OBJ files into one exe file or executable file which is a file we can double click on or run from the command line or whatever. When we hit F11 in Visual Studio it actually goes through this entire process and then it starts executing this executable file and allows us to debug it. Okay, why is the debugger important? Well that's how we tell what's going on on the processor. <laughs> All right, we, we'll eventually learn how to write statements out to the console, the black window I showed earlier. But in the meantime we're just going to do a lot of things on the CPU and we're going to watch things change on the CPU as we do those things. Anyway, we have this CPP file, we have this assembly file right here, but we haven't told Visual Studio what to do with this assembly file. Right now, right now Visual Studio just sees this file as a text file and it will do nothing with that file and that's what I want to change up. So let me clear that off. I'm going to right click, click on properties, and we are looking at the properties for this one assembly file. You can see the item type, as far as Visual Studio is concerned, is does not participate in build. Meaning, Visual Studio just thinks of this ASM file as a text file, and it's just there. But we want Visual Studio to use, take this text file, run the Microsoft Assembler on it, output an OBJ file, and then link that to the CPP file we have floating out here. So we want to change this. We want to say, hey, it does participate in the build, and it's going to be a custom thing. And custom meaning you, me, the person running Visual Studio, will define how this thing builds. 
Click apply, and when I click apply, watch what happens over here. Click apply. Ooh, custom build tool. I get more options here. Click on general, and we have this option here, command line. And basically Visual Studio is saying, I don't know how you want me to build this, but whatever you type here, I will basically put it on the command line for you. All right, and that's the same as typing it in this black console window. Basically, if I whatever I type here, it will run um, as a Windows command uh, for us. So let's do that. Now, here's the part where I said I'm just going to type some stuff and not quite explain what it means or why we're doing it. I'm just going to do it. In the future videos, when I think we're ready for it, I'll explain why I did what we did. But I am going to explain the ML, which is the Microsoft Assembler, and then we need to give it some command arguments here, which I won't explain. Uh, maybe in a future video, uh, percent full path, oops, uh, double quote, perform. Uh, th this is what's going to show up in the window down here. I'm going to say assembling, it's just a message for me and you when we build this thing. Assembling the assembly file, all right? Outputs, well, what's it going to output? It's We need to tell it, hey, we're going to output file name. Uh, dot obj and the obj is important because then visual studio will recognize this obj extension and tell and link to it when it builds this other cpp file so click ok i think we're good i'm going to hit control shift b which will build our entire project and run that command line i just showed you that we typed in watch the status bar down at the bottom let's watch how that changes build started build failed well, let's look at the error list end directive required at end of file oh that's so gorgeous that's gorgeous. Uh, this IntelliSense warning is annoying. Just right click here and say don't show me IntelliSense. This is this is the real error. End directive required at end of file. MyAssembly.ASM. So it's, it's basically the Microsoft Assembler, that command I gave it, uh, returned an error code and Visual Studio read the output from that program and basically dumps it down here for our convenient convenience. And the Assembler basically says, um... Um, I need an end directive. Why is it complaining? Well, we haven't written any assembly code, and we, we, and we need to. <laughs> we need to write assembly code. So let's do the most basic assembly code we can do. Uh, again, I'm just going to type a bunch of stuff. Don't worry about what it means. Uh, dot 586. Again, I'll explain it later. Dot model flat C. Dot stack. Let's go 100. Sure. Dot data. Uh, we don't want to put anything there. Dot code, and I think that's all we need. Just looking here. All right, Control Shift B, build started, build succeeded. Okay, we're good. All right, this is like the bare bones assembly program, and it does nothing. All right, and I know some of the lines, most of the lines have dots in front of them for now. Uh, don't stress that. We have this end, which okay, whatever. And then we have this empty main in C++ that does nothing. Control F5, just make sure everything runs. We get the press any key to continue. All right, so we're set up. We're ready to write some assembly code. Next video, please.